It's showtime. Hello and welcome to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We're your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week we will be discussing musicals, but specifically what they taught us. And I didn't muck it up. No, and then I was like, oh, do we? is this when we do the tap number? No, no. We put honey out. Yeah. Um, I'm so proud of myself. I've mucked up the last three intros. I think I deserve a round of applause. Yay! Thank you, thank you. All good? All good. Still got a wee bit of a... I mean, it's the longest running cold in, all, in, in like, history of man. Woman. I know, but I think I'm going to be able to control it. You did very well the last episode. If it had been Thanks. me, I'd have been coughing and spluttering all over the place. We know, clearly know who's the bigger drama queen of the of the partnership. It's always been you. <laughs> I, I refute that. <laughs> it's always been you. Drama queen slash diva. <laughs> That was so last year. Yeah. We put that one to bed, oh, thank you, we? and we're not opening that box <laughs> up again. Oh, is here. that a Pandora's box? Is that uh, like what is that, or is that something? Yeah, Pandora's box. Okay. Yeah, which is a uh, part what, of what mythology? are you putting to? Oh, I I promise you, I didn't even mean oh, that. Oh, did you not? Because that's why I was like, no, oh. I did not. But God, we're good. I know we're so good. Yeah, Pandora's box. You're not allowed to open it. Because if you open it, then badness okay. happens in the world. I and think that, once it's opened, you can't put back in what, what you took out. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, so we're not going back there with the whole diva thing. That's okay. been put in the box and we're not opening the lid. But it is mythical. Yeah. And we're having a mythical lovey loving yeah. this weekend. So we did love last week for Valentine's. This week's not quite Valentine's anymore. Close enough, though. Close enough, yeah. We could have easily done this musical last weekend, we to be have. fair. We could have. Which yeah. is funny, because we were going to do this one first, and then Yeah, because we... I texted you going, which, which one are we doing first? I suppose anyway, it didn't really matter. So on last week's episode, which hopefully you will remember, guys, I asked Timothy about um, famous, or who do you think are the best love couples in musical theatre? And then I said... Somebody that we were, or people we were going to talk about. Yeah. So this kind of did lead, lead on. In, lead there's, into this week, yeah. There's a couple of love couples in this musical. Yeah, love's a big, a big kind of theme for this, this week's musical, which yeah. is... <laughs> Hades Town. Way down, Hades Town, way down under the ground. Absolutely. I love so, it. Yes, you're like slightly fanatical about yeah. it, aren't you? But have never seen it. Yes, I have seen it. I know. Um, like so on a whim, like very fortunate. But we'll maybe come to that yeah. when we talk about our memories of it. Yeah. I Exciting? Yeah, I'm really excited to get into this. Are you? Uh, are you kind of like up to date on your Greek mythology and stuff. Right, see, this is where I contradict myself so much. I love Greek mythology. I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> I will read the books, will not pronounce the names correctly, <laughs> will not get the stories correct. It's not just the Greek mythology <laughs> that you don't pronounce correctly, <laughs> Lord, to be fair. And it'll sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I really do. Like somewhere in my brain, I know all about like loads of my books, which are currently packed in a box, but I could go and get you like all the women in Greek mythology. I have read like, you know, uh, um, other writers who take like Hercules stories and then change them into modern day. Like I just love Greek mythology. You just can't say any of the names. I can't say any of the names. Can't remember any of the, the, the myths. <laughs> So this could be a really fun episode then. Yeah, because I could rediscover I stuff. I literally have been looking forward to this episode since the end of season one, when we were looking back on our best bits and one of the most, my fondest memories of last 
last year's podcast was your inability to pronounce certain names. Like it just, it's going to be fantastic. I'm going to blow you all out of the water. You know what, Aaron? She could very well blow us out of the water because Aaron and I have both been like, nope, don't, don't mention any of the names. We have, we can't give anything away for free. Haven't we? We've been a bit mean to you. I know, but I do know the names. We'll soon find out. Hmm. Hmm. Place your bets now. Okay. So am I starting to talk about and then you'll just add your wee bits in? Because if you start... that seems to be the normal, the, the, the norm, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll start and you can just dollop in I know, but when you feel I like I was going to say, you could start, but then you'll say the names of the characters and then I'll hear what they are meant to sound like. Maybe, yeah. So I'll start. I'm giving nothing away for free. Never do. Okay. You got to work for it. I, I feel like there's a lot of the Greek tragedy for you. So. Yeah, oh! that's why he's here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> boom, boom. Love that. <laughs> Do you like Greek mythology? Not at all. No. Nope. No. Definitely not. Uh, it's so over my head. It's too. It's too confusing. I'm not a sci-fi fan. I'm not really any of that. It's all very confusing. I know you didn't like brain. Greek theatre whenever we were studying it at awful, A level. Awful, awful. Antigone and although Antigone was okay, I enjoyed yeah. our Antigone. Uh, what was that god awful thing that we did? Um. <laughs> Thing. I'm not sure. Chalk circle or something. Oh, um, is that Caucasian Greek? chalk circle? Is that Greek? No, that's um, Bert, Brecht. Brecht, 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 But it was in the style of Greek theater. Oh, was it? Yeah. So I knew there was something there that There's was grinding in my gears. In it, so. Greek chorus. Ooh, that was nice. That's from something. That's definitely a reference from something, but I couldn't tell you what from. It just it sounds like a like a South Park my... thing or something. I know it wouldn't. Or be, is but... it in Legally Blonde? Because you know the way her, her girls like are with her the whole oh, way through it, but okay. they're not actually with her. I think at some point is they it? come on and go Greek chorus. Oh yeah, because they're up Delta News. Yeah, which is Greek. Delta new 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 Delta new 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 you are a Delta new 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 Why are we talking about Legally Blonde? We haven't done that one yet. No, I One for the list. One for the list. Okay, so Hades Town is a sung through musical and it is one of our trilogy, like we don't get these often, mm-hmm. where lyrics, book and music are by Anne Mitchell. And I think that's part of the magic of Hades Town, yeah. like the cohesive voice because mm-hmm. most musicals, like those three disciplines are kind of like split up, aren't they? Yeah. It came from Mitchell's folk album of the same name. So Mitchell does not have a Broadway background. What? I love how you've just said Mitchell. <laughs> Do you want to say Mitchell's I did. First name? I did. You just didn't hear it. Was it Anus or Anus? I never said Anus. Well, I'm asking you, I how do you say it? Anais. Anais. Okay. Anais. Anais. Is that a... Anais Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she does not come from a Broadway background. Mm-hmm. Um, she is a singer and a, a, yeah, and then moved into the, the folk singing and she just fell in love with this story um and this story is would this story be so what story is this version based on what what ancient greek myth is hades town based on we're ready aaron this story tells a version of the greek myth of orpheus and your (laughs) dices Eurydices. 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 Oh, I even wrote it down. Eurydices. I still can't say it. Eurydices. I think I put a web as well. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're eight minutes in. <laughs> yeah, so the Greek myth of Orpheus and Eurydices. Eurydices, okay. Yeah. So in this <laughs> musical, Eurydices is poor and looking for food. Um, she ends up having to go to work in the industrial version of the Greek underworld. Yeah. Uh, and we know that the ruler of the Greek underworld is Hades. Well done, Tick. Um, and um, her, her singer lover, um, Orpheus, attempts to rescue her. Yeah. 
So we'll go into it a wee bit more. It premiered in 2006 in Vermont. Now Vermont. this blows my mind. So we already know that it comes from a folk album from Mitchell. Okay. Hades Town, the musical premiered in 2006 in Vermont. Where do we know Vermont from? Is that um, by Christmas yes. Vermont? Yeah. I thought that. Yep. I was um, like, how did I know Vermont when I was doing my research? I was like, mm. I know that place. It then went off Broadway mm-hmm. in 2016. It went off West End in 2018. It then went to Broadway in 2019. And it is returning to the West End. I think, has it opened? Uh, it no, opens February. this weekend, the Brilliant. 10th of February at the Lyric Theatre. Um, and it's currently booking to December 2024. And it, people need to get on and get their tickets. You need to so, go. So, uk.hadestown.com. Uh, you need to go. Uh, 14 Tony nominations and it won eight. Yeah, the 73rd Tonys, uh, it received the most of the evening, yeah. And it won Best Musical, Best Original Score, Best Actor in a Featured Role for Andre De Shields. I saved you that one there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Best Direction for Rachel Chavkin. Yep. Yeah. So this show took 12 years to get to Broadway, Mm. but the show that started in Vermont in 2006 is not the show that is currently on Broadway and will be on on the West End. She was very unsure of the future of the musical, wasn't she? And I think that's why she turned it into a concept album, which was released in 2010. Yeah. And it was only really until 2012 when Mitchell met the director, Rachel Chavkin, that the two of them started to rework the stage production uh, with additional songs and dialogue. Yeah. So that time, 2006 in Vermont, was probably a really magical time for an awful lot of creatives. It seems to be one of those places where there was this... A creative cafe and people mm. would have gone and done like prose night and a poetry night and uh, singing and just everything and she performed um this this album or a couple of songs um and then somebody decided that they would take this mm. on tour yeah um but Did it, it was snow in vermont by the way like a christmas carol christmas no. carol or Not christmas white carol christmas? white christmas no. No? okay um and it wasn't actually actors who were in this production. It was the baristas and the waiters. And, yeah, nice. um, and I love theatre like that. Like, I love that grittiness. Yeah. Um, I cannot get enough of Hades Town. I know. Do you know how the, the idea first came to her? Yes. Yeah. It's a really, like, mysterious, like... Con- like beginning of the process uh, Mitchell states that some of the lyrics just popped into her head and they seem to be about the myth of Orpheus and Eur- Eurydice uh, and from there uh, got excited about following that idea of the myth and exploring uh, the telling of that story through song um, she was driving the car and the lyrics, wait for me, yep. I'm coming in my garters and pearls. With what m- uh, melody did you barter me from the wicked underworld? Now, those lines never made it into the eventual show, but um, the melody is the melody yeah. for wait for me, which is one of the yeah. musical numbers. And cool. I th- I watched uh, loads of documentaries. Way for me. Loads and loads of documentaries. There is an amazing <sighs> documentary. I'm coming. You interrupted my phrase. Sorry. And Aaron was going to answer me and you didn't give him the opportunity. Okay. Um, it's called Road to Hades Town and it's another one from Wait in the Wings. Are you taking this down, Aaron? Yep. Documentary 262. That's Check. it. Um, it is... I think it's an ov- well over an hour. I felt like I was watching it for 20 minutes. It really? is unbelievable. Say that again. I didn't write it down. So it's one from my, my wee mate, Wait in the Wings. Wait in the Wings. You've mentioned that yeah. before. And it's uh, called Rose. Do you think Wait in Road. the Wings listens to us? I mean, the bloody shoot with all the name checking we're giving them. So good. I think we so need to good. contact okay. Wait in the Wings just so that they know how fortunate how much, they are. Yeah. <laughs> it is so good. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, it talks about like how, but yeah, she, I, I'm pretty sure if I've got this right, she was driving home to her boyfriend and it was that thought of like, is he waiting for me? And that's where that, okay. that came from. Um, she would have grown up knowing the Greek uh, mythology. Mm-hmm. So that's why she was familiar with um, this love story between Orpheus and Eurydice's. No, Eurydice's. Eurydice's. Yeah. What amazed me about the London, the original London production at the National Theatre, the, in the, the Olivier Theatre, I think, at mm-hmm. the National, um, it only ran from the 2nd of November 2018 to the 26th of January 2019. It was really short. They were so testing it out, weren't they? For 100%. A Broadway. It was still in production. It was yeah. still in a lab. It was still in a workshop. And it was actually Could at... Could have filled me. <laughs> well, it Is was actually good? at that production uh-huh. um, that we then get the characters that we know now so yeah. that you will see currently on Broadway and that you will see whenever you go to see it in West End. Because there was a there's a, there was always a problem, there was always an issue with um, the, who are meant to be, you know, the main love couple, mm. um, Orpheus. And his wee mate. Um, (laughs) (laughs) They were still coming across as unlikable. And they, you weren't having that. Why, uh, why would he turn around? Why would he not understand um, that she would definitely be behind him? For those that do not. Because of Hades. He, he, because of Hades and the, the, the seeds that he planted in, in both of their heads. Yeah, but this is just what the feedback was coming back yeah. from the audience. They still weren't getting it. Yeah. Until two Stupid. people entered <laughs> the roles. And the roles um, were Eva Noblezada. Yep. Yep. Eva Noblezada. Um, she gave uh, Eurydice. Yeah, well done. They, that sort of, I am a powerful woman. She's strong. Yeah. She is really Rather strong. Rather than somebody who was a bit more weak and timid and really yeah. needed food. It mm-hmm. was like, I'm making this decision. I'm going to Hades time because I, I, I want to make this yeah. decision rather than I'm so hungry. I have to go. Yeah. So she changed it slightly. And then Reeve Carney, uh-huh. he made it more. Do you know how sometimes how people think Roger is in Rent with this one song that he's a little bit of um a drip yeah so before that not anything to do with the actors that were playing it just he then didn't turn it into that just more that he really did believe that he is going to create a song Mm. like roger really does believe that he has to create this one last song before he leaves this earth um so yeah um whenever they then got settled into those characters then it became what we what we know and everybody then really believes that this is a beautiful love story yeah it's it's a special piece like and then those two fell in love in real life i know because of it yeah yeah Mm. i think there's more to that story but we're not gonna go there i'm just saying (laughs) (laughs) yes yeah they fell in love um Lovely. Yeah, I know. Oh, wait for me. <laughs> I'm coming. So. Musical lyrical lingo then. Yeah. All right. Well, Haiti burns with romance and drama. But if you read between the romantic lines, the story also offers a lot of food for thought. Okay. About loads of different things. The misuse of power. And that's kind of where I was talking about Hades there. Okay. Um, the precariousness of trust. Mm-hmm. Um, and how that poisoned thought between your ears and behind your eyes can be your undoing. Yeah. Which eventually is, is what happened, you know. Yeah. yeah. Because Orpheus just overthought it in his head and turned round when he shouldn't have turned round yeah and that's it and like in this in this story and this in our musical is that she's hungry and she's looking for for food and that's why she goes to Hades town well actually in the original myth she steps on a snake and dies yeah so then orpheus follows her heartbroken yeah. um and he goes to the underworld to get her um so there's there's slight, slight difference there yeah. and he and um 
Eurydice makes a, a, a deal with Hades yes. to become part of the underworld. Yeah. And then she wants to leave the underworld with Orpheus because she's fallen for him. And he, under the encouragement of Hades' lover, who's called... Persephone. Well done. I know. But Perse- I have to sing it. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. Which, what song did you sing? Just Persephone. No. Persephone. Yep. Persephone. Persephone. Um, she kind of per- persuades Hades to g- let them give love a go. Yes. So he's he's wicked and very um, desensitized, I think, feelings wise. And he, he agrees for Persephone to give them an opportunity, but there are conditions. So he will let them leave mm-hmm. the underworld as long as... Eurydice walks behind Orpheus yep. and at no point does Orpheus turn around yep. to check that she's still there. Yep. But he's already cast so much doubt in Orpheus's head of trust. How, how can I trust him? Like yep. he's not known to be this understanding. Like, and in the end, we're probably given spoilers, are we? Mm, no. He does turn around and he loses her. Yeah. You know, and it's like... <gasps> Oh my God, rip my heart out and like pass it yeah. amongst everybody in the audience because that's how it feels. It's yeah. like awful, like it's horrendous. Yeah. And but it kind of brings that whole, you know, what he's thinking in his head, that lack of trust, you know, is his downfall. And I, I think as well, it's interesting that it's not just the doubt he has from Hades, it is the doubt of because she is a strong character and she has yeah. gone yeah. to the other without, place, te- she, without she, telling she, him. She agreed the deal in the first place. So then he he does also have that yeah. in his mind. Um, <coughs> oh, bless you. I know. Um, excuse me, what was I going to say there? I've forgotten. Okay. Um, well, I also... I'm <laughs> not a very big Greek myth- mytho- mythological geek. Uh-huh. So the idea of these gods, I really didn't know very much about at all. So we've mentioned a few yeah. already. So. Because I think it's important to test say. Test time, right? Before we go into it, it's important to say that Persephone and Hades are actually niece and uncle. Oh my God. As well as husband and wife. Because that's not at all confusing. So, this is why I'm not into this whole Greek th- mythology thing. So Hades is the brother of Zeus um, and a couple of others who I can't remember. Um, and he, as a joke, sort of says, well, I can take Persephone. Um, but then he does end up falling in love with her. Yeah. Um, well, let's her. take those two first starts. So Hades, for anybody who doesn't know, keep me right if my information isn't correct, folks, because I am the amateur here. Uh, Hades is the god of death and ruler of the underworld, sometimes known as the wealthy one. Uh, he fell in love with and married Persephone. His mother, the goddess of harvest, refused to bless the earth while Persephone was below. In this version of the story, yeah. he is a greedy, zealous industrialist. Yeah. So that's Hades. So then Persephone then, she's the goddess of seasons. And I didn't know that. Okay. And there's beautiful songs that talk about yeah. that. So she's the goddess of seasons, flowers, fruit and grain. By arrangement, she spends half of the year with Hades in the underworld, causing fall and winter to happen above. Yep. And then the other half, she returns with her mother, bringing spring and summer with her. In this modern version, she plays a good time party girl uh, to dull her disenchantment with the underworld, um, which that said arrangement there's other problems with her marriage to him. Yes. Yeah. And what's it really interesting in, obviously, whenever it started in 2006, um, the Hades town wasn't an industrial place. Mm-hmm. It was actually a bar. 
Okay. And that is where she secretly ran like a, a like a speakeasy. Yeah. Without Hades knowing. Okay. And then it has eventually, it's no longer that. Okay. Um, but I just love that, that she would have been this, like, let's get everybody um, happy for working and slaving yeah. for um, Hades town. Is it not kind of still set? In like a speakeasy kind of bar mm, set, not like as, set wise. Not not as um prevalent, is that the right word? Not as prominent, well, prominent as what it as was what in two thousand six. I will be interested because I will make sure I make my way back to London to see this again because I'll be in your suitcase. Yeah, we'll go together. Let's okay. do it. Um We've got Orpheus, just in case anybody who doesn't know, son of the muse of epic poetry. Engaged to marry Eur- uh, Eurydice with his golden voice and lyre, L Y R E. Now that was one of my musical lyrical lingos. Okay, I didn't know what a lyre was. Oh, do you know what a lyre is? It's a musical instrument. It is indeed a did musical we not do instrument. This in another, I think we did. Maybe. Yeah, because I mentioned it's in Robin Hood. Oh, Robin in Hood, the, Robin the Hood, Disney film. Yeah, it's like a. It's like a stringed instrument, isn't mm-hmm. it? Like a U-shaped harp. Yeah. Very good. Um, but uh, used especially in ancient Greece, apparently. So, with his golden voice and lyre, Orpheus charmed all living things, even rocks and stones. This modernised account features an Orpheus of a musical mission beyond his love for Eurydice. Yeah. Eurydice. But he is totally convinced that he is going to write a song that's going to make them millionaires. Yeah, but that process is beautiful. So his songwriting process in the show, um, this the musical numbers are called Epic. Yes. And it's Epic 1, Epic 2, Epic 3, and they are just divine, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Like, he starts off, he can't write it, it's not working, he, and then he gets another wee bit, and then finally he knocks it out and he sings it to Hades yeah. and yeah it's it's it, it is quite incredible we won't do Eurydice because we've kind of yeah. mentioned her enough haven't we another character mm-hmm. that I particularly like in the the show the musical is Hermes yes and um, played by the unbelievable Andre de Shields. Um, so in Greek mythology, fleet footed guide, messenger of the gods, and conductor of souls to the underworld. In some tellings, it was Hermes who taught Orpheus to play the lyre. Yeah. In this telling, he's a worldly wise narrator, master of ceremonies, and friend and mentor to Orpheus. Yeah. On the road to hell, there was a railroad station. Yeah, well done. And a man with feathers on his feet. Who could help you with your final destination, Mr. Hermes. That's me. And Lovely. Andre de Shields will be disgusted because that wasn't the right rhythm. Uh, I also like the fates. Yes. So in is there is there only three fates or yes. is it just in this telling there's no, only three? There's only th- there, there's- there are three fates. 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 Do you know um, what the fates are? Do you have yeah, so I yeah, just in Road to Hell, just again, like it introduces Hermes, so mm-hmm. of the Herald of God, protector, human traveller of heralds, thieves, um, gypsies, the likes. Fates, then they assign destinies to mortals at birth. And if you have never watched it, which you need to get on it, Hercules. Bless my oh, that what they all are. They're all the um witches at the beginning and they have the string and they try to cut. Never you need to watch that, it to understand. So they're, they're the not fates. they're not the ones dressed in white and do the gospel number, no. What are they? In Hercules? Is Greek choir, is it? Yeah. Is that right, fair enough? Yeah. Sorry. Um, Greek chorus, sorry. Yeah. Greek chorus. So <clears throat> that is who the fates are. Mm. Would yeah, you really have more? and I love the fa- the fates, three goddesses who together determine the destinies of mortals, mm-hmm. measuring their lifespans uh, and their suffering. In this story, they follow fluster, niggle, and cast doubt and insecurity in the minds of some. Yep. But their class, their bits are like... Yeah, they're they're good. bits are yeah. really cool. And also, like how a normal Greek chorus would have been if you were watching any uh, play back in the day, they tell the story, they move the story, and they fill you in and let you know what's happening. That's it. If because it can be quite confusing. Well, and it's it is a there is a it's quite a small cast. Mm-hmm. 
And we've kind of mentioned all of the gods. They owe, like the only other people on stage are what they call the workers' chorus. Um, made up, there's about six of them maybe, like there's not a huge number of them. Uh, and in ancient Greek theatre, the chorus sang, spoke and danced in unison, so often representing the voice of citizens. The chorus comment on the action of the characters and serve as an emotional uh, conduit yeah. for the audience. And that's the the fate, the fates and the workers' chorus are kind of like... Work, work together yeah. in this this piece. Well, can you see that's where I thought the church ladies of colour purple were mm-hmm. a bit similar to, to that. So it was yeah. pulling on those things to kind of tell the story yeah. to to those outsiders. It's brilliant. I also was really thick and didn't, because I don't know mythology, uh-huh. the underworld, like I didn't, I surmised that it might be like, under the ground. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But it's the regions below the earth's surface imagined as the home for the departed souls or spirits sometimes referred to as Hades. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. There we go. I mean, there's, there's quite a lot to unpack. So that was... It, it's a, a lot. lot. There, there, is, there is a lot and it is very emotional. A bit like Shakespeare in most of his mm. tragedies, but specifically Romeo and Juliet when we just spoke about... Um, it lets you know at the beginning what's going to happen. Yeah. But if you are not paying attention, you mm. might miss that. Like, I look forward to seeing it again because when I went to see it, I was just so gobsmacked by everything I was seeing and hearing and how different it was and how unlike any, like anything I'd ever seen before that I, I did get it. Mm-hmm. Like, I got it, but I don't think I will, I would have got it to the depth that I know it now because I've yeah. like obviously you see it once I had never see, heard the music as well okay. before I saw it so obviously then you're like listening to the yeah what I now know was a concept album and then they released the Broadway cast recording and it was just like you you just constantly listen to it because it's so good I now get it but I look forward to seeing yeah. it again and how much more I can get yeah. from it because it it's a lot, like there's a lot that goes on. Yeah. There's a lot of content. But I think that's where people say that's where she was amazing at the storytelling. Yeah. The director has been amazing at getting that story across and the music and the lyrics. Everything just works so well that you know that this is a tragedy. Mm-hmm. And you know that this is not going to end well for anybody who is featured on stage. Yeah. But yet you are still, your breath is taken away whenever mm. it happens. Um, and then it starts all over again. And you can mm. see that it's, oh, okay, so this is just going to continue on a loop. Yeah. Constantly, constantly, it's somebody constantly. somebody else's story. Yeah. 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 Any other musical there, Yeah, then? so in a, Any Way the Wind Blows. Any Way the Wind Blows. That's not the right That's tune. That's definitely not the right tune, but... Any Way the Wind Blows. That was better. Was it? It was. Oh, it says you. Right. I know. Okay, says interesting. Me. I'm, I'm really right, yeah. Okay, so it mentions crows and buzzards. Yep. Did you know that buzzards are the most common UK bird of prey? No, I didn't. No. Well, no, you did. <laughs> Thank you. No, I you love, do. I love a bird of prey. You can always just spot a bird of prey in, in the sky. They just move really differently, don't they? I'm not a bird wat- watcher, but I am fascinated by... Because let's be honest, where we live, there, you don't come across birds of prey very often. No. Do you know what I mean? So when you do see one, like they do stand out just by the way they seem to be able to glide or like almost hover. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're like almost still. Yeah. In, in in the sky and other mortal birds. Mortal. See what I did there? Um, mortal. mortal birds aren't as cool as that. Do you know what I mean? They don't have those qualities. They flap around like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I learned about a buzzard. There we um, go. Also, well, we, we knew that Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. The Demeter, apparently, is her mother. Demeter? I don't know. Demeter. Demeter. Niece and wife of Hades. In the song Way Down, Hades Hades Town. Way down under the ground. It mentions ambrosia wine. 
Yes. And did you know what Ambrosia no, wine? No, I didn't. So Ambrosia wine is the food and drink of the Greek gods. That is what they would have lay around drinking and eating and filling their bodies full of. Give me some of that. I know. Um, did, were you going to say something there, Aaron? Nectar About of the gods. I think it was nectar of the gods. Yeah. yeah I, I do have a wee piece for Aaron, don't worry. Oh, do you? Um, I learned a wee bit more from way down Hades Town as uh-huh. well. Uh of all the characters, I think Persephone has the most interesting lyrics. I learned the most from oh, her. Okay. I noticed like the majority of my musical lyrical lingos have come from lines that she has oh, okay. sung, which I thought was quite interesting. She sings about down there, it's a bunch of stiffs, um, uh, which is just the average person, usually male, rude, oh. um, of no particular distinction, skill or education. Oh. So that's how, obviously, we know she wasn't enamoured with the underworld. Yep. That's how she described them. She also sings, uh, they also, I think it's maybe Hermes sings this line, Mr. Hades is a mean old boss with a silver whistle and golden scale. Oh. Now, this golden scale could have two possible meanings, okay. I think. So the first one, um, I think, is Hades weighs your soul using proverbs like um, an eye for an eye mm-hmm. and then decides your judgment. So that could be the golden scale and how he measures okay. you as a person. It then can also refer to like merchant scales uh, and that Hades' motivation is money in this yeah. In this version, his um, motivation is money and wealth and all that that's all that drives him in this. Mm, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um so yeah. No, I, I think it's probably that second one is a good good call. Yeah. And then the I think Persephone sings to the bottom of the sing sing cell. Yes. Where I'm the little, so intrigued by yeah, this. Yeah, where the little wheels squeal and the big wheels groan. Listen to those lyrics. I know. Delicious. So Sing Sing. Did you know about Sing Sing? Um, I've heard of Sing Sing. Okay. So Sing Sing is the infamous prison in upstate New York. Yeah. But at no point with this setting okay. did I presume that's what it was referring, referring to. to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just went, oh, Greek myth- yeah. mythology, Sing Sing, Jail. I just didn't think the two would have been linked in the musical but yeah yeah no i'd I'd never heard of um sing sing uh prison but their cells were seven feet by three feet by three feet but they were built by the cellmates okay um but inmates cellmates (laughs) Um, hey cellmate hey cellmate (laughs) buddy want to build an extension Uh, yeah (laughs) Um, yeah yeah yeah, i thought that was sing sing but again obviously a, a place where is not Somewhere you would probably choose to go. So that's just another. Yeah, the only sing imagery. sing I know is that song, sing 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 sing. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I think it's zoom zoom. I'm oh sure yes, zing zing. Zoom, no, there's definitely zoom. zing zing in some musical. I'm thinking Liza Minnelli. She's bound to have sung about a zing sing. Don't sing. 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 sing Um, in wait for me. Wait which... for me. I'm is coming. Such a beautiful song, but whenever you choose to do it at a great big night of musicals, it and don't have any context and don't have your spinning stage, it's probably not the best song to choose. And it's also I. It was only when I then did the research that I went. That's like the penultimate. I know song, which is like bringing the story to its climax. I know. And I went. That's a real like. Let's just put out how it all ends here, folks. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I get why they did it in that no, it involves everybody. It's really multi-layered. But out of context, I get it. I get it, I get it. I, I get just it. don't feel like that would have excited people to go and see it when we spoke about that before. But anyway. But that song. Play for me. Beautiful. Get stuck in your head for days. It, <laughs> it mentions, will be after this episode. <laughs> it mentions uh, something we spoke about before, Moonshine. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. That's in Our Lady of the Underground. Sorry. Oh. Uh, um, it mentions masterpiece. And I'm going to let Aaron explain what that word masterpiece means. Is it just not an oil, an oil painting? No. no. Mwah. You can let me explain this. Yeah. Um, my understanding is a masterpiece is whenever somebody comes to the end of an eight year apprenticeship informally, then they would have to create what was called a masterpiece. So, say, an artist or a sculptor or something like that, or um, perhaps 
a craftsman of some sort, like a carpenter, they would, at the end of their um, tenure, to demonstrate the skills that they've learned, they create what's called their masterpiece. And in doing so, it ends their apprenticeship and begins their mastery of the craft. Ah, uh, a masterpiece? Yeah. I wonder who took that amount of time to carve me. <laughs> I am somebody's masterpiece. Like you that. are. You're my masterpiece. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Yeah. You always explain that, right? that. Yeah. 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 Um, you do have a way with words. You're, you're sometimes on the wrong side of the table, I, I feel. Know. I tend to waffle. I'm quite verbose. No, I just... Verbose, there's... I would need to look that up. Musical lyrical lingo, verbose. But that's definitely, you know, just the wait for me is a masterpiece. Yeah. Because as you said, it comes at the end, towards the end of the musical. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. A song that's maybe not so beautiful, but very dramatic and building and tension is Chant. Yep. So the song called Chant and it is a bit like a chant. I like that. There's quite a few bits mm-hmm. musically that are very like that and rough and ready and raw. Uh, they sing, uh, again, I think it's Persephone. Uh, Why is it so hot down here, hotter than a crucible? It ain't right and it ain't natural. Natural. Crucible. What is a crucible? I thought it was a theatre until the, oh no, it's like isn't the crucible where they do the wee um it's snooker, isn't it? Isn't that where the snooker final happens in the crucible? Yeah, you see it was right. Um but in this I'm case sorry. Hold a on. crucible I know Hold on. snooker fan, who would have thought? Is it the only way you know crucible? And it's not because I'm gonna hit you over the head. No, it's that bloody play we did and I didn't enjoy it at all. Um You liked it, didn't you? We were so good at it. <laughs> and we were so good at the adaptation we did of yeah, it. Yeah, we flipped it on its head, didn't we? Yeah. Because you couldn't do anything just the way it was written in school and in GCSE or A-level drama. You always had to change it in a Well, that, that way. was. It was this and piece. You had to it. change it. Yeah. Can you remember what we called ours? Um, Raising up a whore or something. Pulling heaven down and raising up a whore. Oh, it was close, wasn't yeah. I? Yeah. 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 We basically... it That is a line in the crucible. We, yeah, it is a line in the crucible, but we we swapped the the genders of the roles, didn't we? So, so ra- rather than Abigail, it was like Ali, who was like a young schoolboy, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, who was like trying to... And I was I was Joan Proctor. Yeah, rather than jo- John. And were you a teacher or something? Was that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I was the the husband, the husband. Ethan. Isn't it Ethan? Well, yeah, oh, we changed it, it to Ethan. Ethan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, no. Which is so weird because then I went on to have an Ethan. That's weird. Oh, that is weird, right? Enough. Oh no. Um. Anyway, the crucible in this case, it's uh, remember it was, uh, it was feels like so long ago <laughs> since I did the musical lyrical lingo. Why is it so hot down here, hotter than a crucible? Uh, the crucible that they're talking about is a ceramic metal container in which metals or other substances may be melted or subject to high temperatures. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that there was a container like that. But I think that's well, that's also what the plays, you know, you're putting mm. them all in those and then something's going to... Yeah. Up and then they sing, lover, I was lonesome. So I built a fondry in the ground beneath your feet. That's Hades to Perse- uh, Persephone. And that a fondry, if you... F-O-U-N-D-R-Y is a workshop or factory of casting metal. Mm. Foundry. 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 Sorry, it's just my, just my accent. Foundry. Fa- foundry. 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 You, you would find out a couple of businesses would maybe call themselves Foundry. You know, maybe if they network a lot or they uh, work with different groups of people or they do... Mm. And then every year it's getting worse. Hades Town, hell on earth. Did you think I'd be impressed with this neon necropolis? And what is that? So a necropolis is a large designed cemetery with several elaborate or decorative tomb-like monuments. The word derives from ancient Greek, the word meaning city of death. So Persephone refers to Hades Town as a city of death. That is harshly and unnaturally lit yeah. by Hades. Um, 
this is directly opposite for her as the goddess of spring and yeah. life above the ground in natural light. So yeah. she, that's why she doesn't like Katie's Town. It's all neon and fake. And So the contrast mm. is not only in visually, whenever you're watching it, you see whenever she goes up and yeah. that there's the spring and, and all of that, but also in that language. It's also quite interesting costume-wise. Like um, all of the costumes are quite dark of palette. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 1930s like, revolutionary was the... You know... Um, Inspiration. There's lots of greys and browns and blacks. Um, and Persephone's, is, Persephone's in a green dress. And that, again, was a character, not an issue, but they couldn't quite get um, Persephone across enough. Mm. And it was only um, somebody went down into one of the theatres and into the costume and seen this green dress and pulled mm. it out and put it on her and it's like yeah, and then that put wee do. bits of flowers in her hair and stuff yeah. like yes yeah. so she really she stands out from the rest of the the cast which is yeah. kind of cool in his kiss the riot um it mentions belladonna kiss and belladonna is a poison for humans oh okay i don't know much more about it like is mm. it is it still a poison or like is it not willing to try? No, to uh, no. Yeah, it's a plant. It's, it's a plant. plant. Sorry. Oh, okay. Like in Sutropolis. Yeah. Okay. But it's dangerous for the animals. See, I have no idea what you're talking about. There was Sutropolis. It's a Disney film. Oh, oh yes, I have seen that with the fox. Yeah. Oh, very good. Okay. Um, I think um, it's still in. The chant, or maybe my notes have, have got mucked up, but um, I think Persephone, again, my favourite, she is my yep. favourite character. Um, she sings, harvest dies and people starve, Ocean oceans rise and overflow, it ain't right and it ain't natural. Yep. Now, remember I was saying that, you know, in Hades Town, obviously, romance is, is so important, but actually it offers a lot more food for thought and part of it which I when I read it I went well, how does that happen um, they had said about you know climate change and global warming and I went seriously but then you read that lyric and it's obviously a, yeah. an allusion to modern climate change Persephone laments Hades obsession with his factory and wall telling them that it's it's his fault you know she desperately wants it to change but Hades is obstinate in his beliefs so that's a wee nod to the state yeah. of the planet. Yeah. Also building walls. And that was before, you know, oh, yeah, they, the... some some say that the, that is a nod to oh, okay. the Berlin Wall oh. and then the U, US Mexican. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because that's how Orpheus gets into Hades town mm -hmm. is because he climbs the wall yeah. and then Hades is like, how did, how did you get in? Nobody... Yeah. Can can get through this Because Hades sings a song about We build a wall, we build a wall. And that's basically all he sings, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's it. That's why we build a wall, we build a wall, we build a wall. And mm -hmm. he does have the lowest voice you have ever heard in a human. It's a great part, Hades. <sighs> So Isn't it? Cool. So cool. And the originator, um, Patrick Page, he is so uh, scary or, mm -hmm. but not like there's something really, oh, I need to be in his presence or something. Oh, Isn't you there? Do. You do. You see when he sings, your body rattles. Uh, with him. It's like, uh, he's so good. He's in what you still need to watch, Schmigadun. Okay. He also was in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The, oh, was he? The, yeah, the um, original stage production. He plays Frodo. Hellfire, uh, hellfire. Yeah, so you gypsy good. gypsy bird. Yeah. But he's also in Gilded Age. Oh, okay. okay it's, which it is, is not. It is. No, but it is recorded on yeah. the box. I do need but to watch he, it. he is. Does he speak like this? Of course. But he, <laughs> again, as a character where you know you, 
he's, he's not a main main character, but again, you're like, I shouldn't really like you, but okay. You yeah. know, like, yeah. 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 Um, but in Schmigadoon season two, because it's all those darker musicals, he mm. has this like looming sort of effect over all of the characters and he's just great. In that, okay. So. He was great in Hades Town too, to be fair. He is good. That w- I think, you know, when you've seen someone. Yeah. I think him and Andre de Shields. Yeah. When you've seen them, I think it would be it's very hard to imagine anybody else in those roles because they were so. In yeah. my opinion, they were so suited to Hades and Hermes, respectively. Yeah, you know, and it's I like whoa. I think because I've listened. Well, I've listened to the concept album mm. quite a lot, but I've listened to the original cast recording as well. An awful lot. I. I feel like I just have them in yeah, my head. Yeah. There's a um a toxic Google with them. Toxic Google. No Tox at Tox. Google. <laughs> <laughs> Tox, I'm writing these all down. To- I'm not leaving the house all- I'm off. I'm off work next week. Yeah. For Tox half term. At Tox at Google. That's what we're doing all week long. Um, and it's yeah, they, they they're great speaking about Hades Town. Yeah. Um, and he's just so like Andre de Shields is just so humble about you know his mm. previous life as a um, a lecturer and but he just how he loves performing and how performing is just life and yeah. oh, he's great. and he didn't look at any point like he was performing no just so natural it was just him um oh my god. His costume, he wore like a silvery grey suit. Oh, wow. And he had a slight heel oh. on his shoe. And he had a cane with like a brass top. Oh, and I'm like, gosh. Oh, wow. I I want to be him. I'm just going to rewind there. Whenever he said a slight heel, and you went, oh, a Cuban heel. Is there something about that, you know? No, I could. No, it's not that I find a Cuban heel very attractive. I just mean... I Why get, would you not? I'm just seeing it all together. Don't you worry. Um, you would need to get on to the Isle eBay and get your Cuban heels <laughs> ordered. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a hard pass for me. I'm all right for now. <laughs> you won't be saying that if, it, if you walk in with a Cuban heel and she goes, oh. Um, do you have any? Let's move on quickly uh, before we end up in the underworld. Do you have any? All oh, our musical lyrical lingo. No, they are all my musical lyrical lingos. I just have one more. Uh, what you gonna do when the chips are down? Now that the chips are down. What you gonna do when the chips are down? Now that the chips are down. That was beautiful. Thank you. That's our friend, the Fates. They sing that. Um, I love that. Um, chips are down. That idiom. Oh, okay. Yeah, and what it means I, it, when a very serious and difficult situation arrives. But it's like poker, isn't it? But I don't play poker. Never have done. But that's what it's re- referencing. Okay. There you go. But it's yeah. also an idiom uh, uh, aside from poker. No, but it comes from poker. Are you sure? It comes from poker. Are you sure poker didn't just steal the idiom? No, it comes from poker. So poker came before Like, who's idiom? just going to wake up one day and go, hmm, this idiom, chips are down. This makes total sense. No, you put your chips down in poker means you're laying it all there. Yeah, you're laying it all out. Do you think so it's there- a takeaway reference from, like, McDonald's? When the <laughs> chips are down? Yeah, yeah. When the no. chips are down and the burgers are And served. I've now got one of those chips just right on this show. <laughs> It ha- it, okay, it came from- okay, I don't play poker. No, I know, but it just means- I don't know what a flipping chip is other than salty and delicious as long as they're warm. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I don't understand you. I don't understand me either. I wouldn't worry about it. The chips are your money. Okay. Those circle things. Okay, they're a chip. Chip, Do chip, better chip. research next week. Oh, wow. She's Blue about to up. get the book thrown on her. Four <laughs> bloody hours. I know. I know. All right. Uh, I love how... What? Fabulous I am. Have you discovered that Timothy's right? No. I don't know. Who's going to pay me more? Uh, the expression comes from poker where chips represent money being bad. There you go. 
Congratulations. Congratulations, Maria. Want to star in your art? Yep. Okay. I like getting something right. I mean, you've got most of the words wrong this episode, but sure. Well, we'll give you it's, the idea. It's a Peric factory. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is a beautiful... What's this, What's the story about Orpheus and... Orpheus and... I can't look at it. Fine. Let's just move on. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are we on to? Before we fall out, stand ovations. Great. Well, I was just going to say, at the beginning, there was some creative conflict between... Us, yeah. M- 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 Several then times. Matchsticks and then uh, Mitchell. Um, Matchsticks and Mitchell? Yeah. Um, Who's Matchsticks? Ben Matchsticks is the, uh, the director from 2006. Oh, right. Okay. Have we? <laughs> no. Did we mention Matchsticks? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why is she talking about me? Why is she fresh chips now Matchsticks? <laughs> okay, so so Ben Matchstick, Matchsticks was Matchstick. the, the director of... Yeah. The Vermont. The Verm- the so, very first yeah. ever. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then it wasn't quite... <laughs> She knew that that wasn't what was going to get it onto yeah. Broadway. Matchsticks was crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she had to go with Rachel. Okay. And then Rachel turned it. It's yeah. Matchstick, it's singular. Matchstick. <laughs> Matchsticks match is a delicious chocolate. I think I said chocolate. Matt- <laughs> oh, they oh, yeah, they are good. But a wee bit too good. Um, That's a whole pack in one second. Wait, I think we just interrupted Lauren as she was about to say, I think I said. Shut up. Um, Mitchell <laughs> knew it needed to be more structured for Broadway. And do you know what song sealed it? Way for me, I'm coming. No. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yes, of course I'm right. Yeah. I've sung it the whole episode. Um, and then... One that we haven't really looked at for musical Eric Lingos, though living it up, living it up top, living it up on top. Yeah, that's uh, Persephone when yeah. she comes up to the what? What is it? Just the overworld? If it's not the underworld, it's just what the world. The world. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, that it, that sort of seals it to go. Um, that sealed it to go off Broadway to show Hades Town was the worst option. So, because people couldn't understand why she would want to go to Hades Town. Okay. Yeah. So they, she had to then input this "Living It Up Top" song mm-hmm. to show it's a bad option because yeah. people were like, "Well, if you're poor and hungry, you need food, so go yeah. to Hades Town and work yeah. for the food." But Persephone had to come on and sing the "Living It Up" Living it up. to show. Yeah. Actually, Hades Town is the worst option. It, do you know what? But it's so cleverly written and adapted because. Orpheus and Eurydice's relationship and Hades and Persephone's are both as interesting as each other. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I did, don't feel that Hades and Persephone's are secondary. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, both relationships are super interesting and have you. Because you don't know if yeah. Hades and Persephone are going to make make it through either. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah, I, I really think that's cool. why at the beginning when I say you're meant to think that the main love story is Orpheus and Eurydice, but some people could see mm-hmm. that it's Hades and Persephone. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But there's still tragedy mm-hmm. in in both love stories. Yeah, because they basically agreed to give it another go. Yeah, next year, you know, yeah. this year, or yeah. you know, the next year. Yeah, very yeah. good. But yeah, it's overall just a message to stay united and don't give up. Yeah. Um, but he turned right. I know. He turned right. Because there was so much doubt. So yeah. much doubt. We never mentioned that uh, Reeve played Spider-Man in that wonderful musical. Well, absolutely awful. Probably the worst. We will not be doing an episode on it. Unless we do the top ten worst musicals. Which, and it becomes number one, two and three. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. Did you, you two do the music for it? Yeah. Yeah. Or Bono. Yeah, Bono. Don't know yeah. if it was you two. As a band. Yeah. Yeah, Bono. Bono. Yeah, very good. Well, standing ovations is probably a long list. Um, Everything, everything and everything. Yeah. No, uh, my standing ovation is going to Mitchell because she... Not matchsticks. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, Mitchell. Yeah. Because... 
the lyrics, the music, the book, just yeah. everything. She's is. a very, very talented person. For it? somebody that is not a, does not come from Broadway life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I agree. Yeah. I got a ticket to go and see Hades Town in the Elevate Theatre as a Christmas present. And I think my Who dad... Who does this? But this is the thing. Like, so I think my dad was almost... It was... We were going one Christmas. And I think he was almost embarrassed to give it. He was like, listen, I don't know what this okay. is. But I just saw the ticket. Do you know how much my ticket for Hades Town was? £20. So I think he was like, I'm giving him this ticket. It's very clear. It says £20. It's a musical he's never heard of before. Yeah. And he literally was like, I don't know what it, yeah. what it is or whether it would be any good. But I just saw the ticket. There doesn't seem to be very many other tickets. Yeah. So I just got it. Sure, go and see. It might be awful. Um, my £20 ticket gave me a front row seat. Whoa. Not. It was 20 points probably because my, my eye line and this, my eye line was maybe just above the stage okay. line. Okay. However, that played into it okay. like in wonderful ways because obviously the underworld. So when they flooded the stage with smoke, the smoke was falling off the end of the stage into my lap. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God. Like, then when she went underground, there was a revolve, but the revolve also then lowered. So people disappeared mm -hmm. at different times. So at the end, when he did turn around and saw her and she and started she to goes. disappear, literally she disappeared. You were like, go on. Oh my God. Like it, so it, it played into it. They also had brilliant like lamps. Okay. You know, obviously it's, it was set in an industrial, so the lamps were really industrial and big looking, but they, they, um, the workers, uh, were able to swing them out. Wow. So they then became like swinging lights and they swung out over the front rows and back in it, it all of that, I yeah. think just added to yeah. the experience of it. Which would be really interesting yeah. for you to go back and see what 100%. they've done different. But I think if I was to go back, I would want to be at the front again. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't want to be in the front row yeah. in theatres because, you know, you are, it is, they would say it is restricted by the stage. Um, and I saw funny on Hades Town, uh, social media, they're doing like competitions uh. for cheap front row tickets. And I'm like, flip and go for them. Mm -hmm. Like get, get in there because your experience will be enhanced because of it. I think, do you know what I mean? Cause if I was sitting further away, you were like, you felt like you were in, you were in the uh, underworld yeah. with them. Like you were involved, wow. like they were so close to you. So yeah, the, the, all of those things are kind of my standing ovation. Like, those are just my last of memories and they really add it to it. Um, I also love the opening that it starts with that trombone mm -hmm. solo and then it goes into the chugga, 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 chugga. And then the legend that is Andre de Shields starts yeah. to narrate. And it's written in like prose and like poets and stuff, you know, like poems. And it's just really, it's really, really class. And then obviously that, ending that I've sung the whole way through way for me it's just and it's like just all beautiful in, in the production it is so immersive that song that it's a shame that when they did it you know in that musical concert it doesn't have the same effect because it's taken yeah. out of context and I, I think that is the problem it is such a uh, a powerful song but it needs all of it needs everything that's gone before it and what's going to come after it. Yeah. And it needs the staging because I know the revolving staging really, mm -hmm. and the up and down, really elevated the production. Yeah. So. I mean, I was really sad after I saw it and it then disappeared so quickly because yeah. it basically was there for not even a month. It was there for a couple of weeks, wasn't it? Um, and it disappeared off to Broadway that I was like, no, oh, I'm not going to see it again. And it, to be fair, it's taken a, a good, it's taken longer for a London production to come back than I thought it would. I know. Do you know Especially because I mean? it wasn't, it was off Broadway. Yeah. 
her off West End. You know, it was it wasn't like it was on for maybe like two years and then went to Broadway yeah. and then whatever. It's just and I so don't strange. know. I don't know if maybe producers they thought no, it need we need it needs to go to Broadway and have a long run in Broadway to get a name for itself because I'm not so sure. Leaving London that first time round, it even still had a name yet. I think there was a lot of people like me who had gone to see it, didn't know what they were going to see. Do you know what I mean? And then it went. I it think did, you they know, thought not, that not... until they opened it in Broadway. Yeah. And people who had been listening it for 12 years. All came all out of the came, woodwork. And they yeah. all had the red yeah. flower. And because they yeah, became so symbol, pas- isn't it, the passionate for it. Yeah. You know... But they didn't realise these guys existed. Mm -hmm. So I I think they just didn't know there was fans out there. Mm, Okay. Yeah. But do you think they wanted it to do a certain amount of time in Broadway to get a really big name before they bring it back for the London? I I just presumed it would open in Broadway, maybe do a year in Broadway. And then then would open again in London. And that didn't happen. Like it's been Mm. a number of years. No, I... She was told, Mitchell was told to walk away from it just before it opened on Broadway, to let it go. How could you when she did, like, she is, but she, she did. is it. No, but she, but she did. She, she couldn't give any more to it. Yeah. She did. It has become a real success. And it's not because she walked away, but it just means she had given so much of her life to it. What do you mean by walk away from it? Like creative I, input? Yeah. Okay. Was she quite heavy? Handed in her, her her input up until that part. Yeah. part. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's Great. It's fantastic. I definitely have to see it. Yeah. Just add that to the list. Yeah. No, 100%. It's, it's unlike anything I think a lot of theatre goers will ever see mm-hmm. in a musical con- yeah. context. Do you know what I mean? So my advice who am i to give advice but would be you know go and do go and experience it because it's not like so many of the other musicals you you can't shoehorn this one into a category where you might be able to put another musical or another group of musicals it's in my opinion out there on its own because it's so different and so unique yeah and it and it feels like it it belongs off off Broadway, mm. but not deserve to be there. But you know what I mean. Feels yeah, like something well, that's because okay. it did yeah. start in Vermont with yeah. all of these different creatives. But it, I feel that like you still have that essence. Where is it going into? Is it the the lyric? Is it? Yeah, the lyric theater. I'm trying to picture where that is in London, where the lyric theater is, and as to what size of venue it is. I can't think. No, nor me. Go and see it, folks. Do UK dot Hades. Town.com. Well, that was another good book your one. Tickets. It's so good. You've got to see it. I think people will. Yeah. People will. Yeah, we don't want it to be there for a couple of months and then no. go again. It has to be. It has to do a run, like the run it's done in Broadway and yeah. continues to do. It. Um. I think it was. Yeah, Hades Town in Broadway has become the longest running show in the uh, Walter Kerr Theatre. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That is an achievement, actually. Yeah, to be the longest running musical in its said venue. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, how many musicals or how many, you know, performances have been in it prior to Hades Town taking yeah. up res- residency? Yeah, it's good. Good musical. We've had a run of two really lovely, really good musicals. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the next one. It's, I am. it's it, we're going, because we've kind of been modern, modern. Yeah. So we're going to an old school again uh, in the next episode. And then the following episode, I might be off sick. I might still be sick. Uh, yeah. Aaron might Why do the it? flipper we're doing Because we're doing it to get it over and done with. Yeah, it's one of those ones that's been on the list from the word go. And it's like, we're not doing that. I'm not touching that. So it's kind of too oldies. Because they are yeah. old. We well, shouldn't. We should stop talking about that one, really, because yeah, people aren't going to tune into that. No, it'd that be great. Episode. It'd be a really interesting. Tune in episode. to hear to hear. Cynical Tim will be back yeah. with the vengeance. Not next episode, though. I'm thoroughly looking forward to that one. It's one, one of my faves. Of your faves. 
one it's the one singular sensation why is. are we doing clues I know again? I don't know I get so confused see what I mean Aaron like what's going on with our here, like set up here I told you to figure out the ending and you still haven't come to me haven't given me a PowerPoint presentation about what we're doing I mean you've you've slapped if you saw what I have to do in a week you wouldn't be saying that you're brave you should uh, see what I have to do in a week and I still manage to do everything for this mm-hmm. podcast Next. Before I say something, I will later regret. <laughs> you love me, really. Wait for me. I'm coming to see you next week. See you then. Bye.